This is Kotlin code. Impressive. And understanding it is a good skill to have. Why is that? Well, Kotlin is one of the fastest growing languages, with Google making it the default solution for Android development and established frameworks like Spring, making it a first class citizen in their stack. Kotlin is under heavy active development, and with promises such as building for the browser via WebAssembly, its future looks better than ever. So let's spend the next couple of minutes going through the basics. We'll install Kotlin via SDK Man and then create a main file. Kotlin gets compiled into bytecode and runs on the very powerful JVM. This means you get the whole power and the standard libraries from the Java ecosystem, but through a modern, state-of-the-art programming language, which is pretty easy to learn. To execute the bytecode, we'll use the Java command. Back to the code, the main function is the entry point into our program. It accepts an array of arguments we'll use to create an instance of the member class. By the way, you don't have to use the new keyword when calling constructors in Kotlin. Next, note the data keyword associated with the class. This makes the construct come with additional member functions that allow you to print out the instance state, compare instances, copy instances, and more. We could define the hasValidEmail method directly in the member class, but I am doing it as a function extension here for demo purposes. Depending on your background, you might be familiar with the approach of extending classes or interfaces without using the inheritance mechanism. As I already mentioned, Kotlin is fully compatible with Java and extensions are used heavily to augment and improve the Java standard library. You can see this in action here, where the Kotlin team extended Java strings with methods such as regex. Another great dev experience addition in Kotlin are infix functions. This can be called without using periods or brackets, and I think that we can all agree that the resulting code looks much more like natural language. We'll review many more similar convenience features in this video, since they are a big selling point for Kotlin. Back to the main method, we are fetching a list of members from a file stored on the disk. Before looking at the implementation, note the toInt or null parse method. Usually, if the conversion from string to int fails, an exception is thrown. However, we can avoid this by falling back to null and then use the Elvis operator to provide the default value. In the fetch member function, when the body consists of a single expression, the curly braces can be omitted and the function's return type and value will be simply inferred by the compiler. The Java file object is extended in Kotlin and we can simply call the readLines method to get its contents. Then we can split the text lines into values to compute our list of members. As a small implementation detail, map is a higher order function. This allows it to accept functions as arguments or to return functions. Usually, these constructs have runtime overhead since they have to capture a closure, but Kotlin can perform various optimizations by inlining the lambda expressions. Also, you probably noticed that our members list is explicitly made mutable. This is needed because Kotlin enforces immutability whenever possible. Our declarations can also be switched from val to var if we need values to be reassigned. Once we have the members, we can check if the newly added email is already present in the list. For convenience reasons, I can use this structuring to extract the fields of the member instance. The fields are retrieved in order and we can use underscores for the values we are not interested in. Finally, the members list is mutable, so we can push in a new instance and then simply save it back to the file. We are working with the file system, so keep in mind that if there are issues with the disk, this code might run into problems. Java code forces you to address these possible exceptions at build time, but Kotlin simplifies the dev experience and makes all exceptions unchecked. If you found this video useful, you'll probably like some of the other videos on my channel. Please like, subscribe, and until next time, thank you for watching.